Hey guys, welcome back to Cougar Chem Tutoring. I'm Austin. I'll be running through part uh, one of problem set 15, valence bond theory. Valence bond theory is one of the two theories that you'll learn in this class of bonding theories. These are actually talking about when we're looking at covalent bonds, how we can explain them on the molecular and atomic levels, okay? And this is uh, the first one that you learn about. We learn later of a of molecular orbital theory, which actually will trump this theory. Um, but here we, uh, we, it, we learn that valence bond theory assumes that all bonds are localized between atoms, okay, through the sharing of electrons, okay? Bonds are formed by the overlap of partially filled valence electron orbitals or through partially filled hybridized orbitals. And that's going to be an important word here as we do some of these problems. It, it thus enables us to use the orbital model, okay, uh, remember like S orbitals and P orbitals, those are the, that's part of the orbital model of electrons to produce the molecular shapes predicted by BSEPR. So like linear, trigonal planar, um, trigonal bipyramidal, tetrahedral, and all those and observed, uh, that are observed in nature. Okay, so um, what that means is these are going to be atomic. We're going to be working with atomic orbitals, okay? And that's going to differ from what we talk about in the next one where we're talking about molecular orbitals. Okay, so these are atomic, meaning these um, orbitals are localized to atoms and then they make orbitals by, uh, they make bonds by overlapping orbitals between each other. Meaning if I have an orbital here from somebody and I have an orbital here from somebody, it's the overlap between them that creates this bond, okay? All right, so there are two types of bonds that you need to know about. One is called a sigma bond and one is called a pi bond. A sigma bond is present in all bonds, all bonds, okay? But pi bonds are only present in double bonds or triple bonds, okay? Now pi bonds, we'll, we'll learn why here later in a second, but the way that works is a single bond will have one sigma bond, a double bond will have a sigma and a pi, and a triple bond will have a sigma and two pi. So what that means is if I have, let's say I have a carbon, uh, let's. This is called acetylene here. Whoops, acetylene. Okay, this this bond right here has one sigma bond. This has one sigma bond. This uh, in the middle, however, has one sigma and one two pi. Okay, so let me actually put these in different colors so you can kind of see. So I'm going to put the the sigma in this purplish color. So here's here's our sigma. Whoops, actually let me change the size of this guy. Okay, here's our sigma. And then our pi is going to be, uh, I'll just put this one in blue, okay? Pi is in blue, okay? So um, those are the types of bonds that will be present. Sigma bonds are actually, um, uh, their densities are lay right in what we call the internuclear axis, okay? Meaning in between carbon and carbon, okay, this the space closest between the, between the two nuclei, if this is a nucleus of one and the other, the internuclear axis is this line that, that uh, connects them both. And the electron density for a sigma bond is always in this area, okay? It's always in this area. Whereas a pi bond um, in this, let's let's take this triple bond, for example. A pi bond is above and below this internuclear axis. And it's made by, made by unhybridized pure orbitals, which we'll talk about here in a second. But it's above, so they'll, what they'll do is they'll kind of bend in and, and bond with each other above and below the internuclear axis, whereas the sigma bonds are actually on the internuclear axis, okay? So pi bonds, like we said, um, are above and below, or they can even be on the sides, okay? And uh, on the sides, if it's a triple bond, okay? If it's a triple bond, because we have pi bonds, if you remember, we have an, a py orbital, we have a px orbital, and we have, um, if you can kind of see, this is coming out and into the page, we have pz orbital, okay? And so technically, the z orbital here is on the sides of things, and the y is on the top and the bottom, and the x is usually on the, on the right flat on the internuclear axis. And so sometimes, especially in triple bonds, we actually have both um, above and below, pi bonds above and below the internuclear axis and on the sides of it as well. Okay, so the types of orbitals that make these bonds in sigma bonds are particularly overlapping hybridized orbitals. That is key. The reason we hybridize in the first place, we'll talk about what hybridization means here in a second, but hybridized orbitals are, co are what m constitute most of what we see as sigma bonds, okay? And that'll be between like S and S, uh, like an S orbital and S orbital, S and SP, S and SP2, SP, any, anything that's hybridized, and that includes just a regular S orbital as well, okay? Um, uh, meaning this usually only happens with hydrogen, okay? That, that's really only when you have just an S orbital. Um, and so pi, pi bonds are made by un, overlapping unhybridized P orbitals, okay? Unhybridized P orbitals. Like I, just because uh, of that example, what I was telling you before, remember they're on the three axes, and if they're unhybridized, they're still going to be on those axes and they'll overlap above and below those that internuclear axis. 
Now, a quick a quick intro to hybridization. We'll get more into it uh, later, but a quick intro to hybridization. The reason that we have to do that is because if you remember, we have one s orbital, and then we have these these p orbitals. Um, let me go ahead and, and draw these a little bit. Okay, we have the the three p orbitals, and none of them. Let's take the let's take the example of a of a uh, of a tetrahedral formation. Right, technically, the tetrahedral formation cannot be formed. Um, by this structure, right? Uh, these are all 90 degrees apart from each other. They're all in different axes. Whereas tetrahedral, right? We have one, um, one bond coming, two bonds on the a plane of the page, and then we have one going into the page and one coming out of the page, right? And that's in the 3D structure. That does not fit this structure. This is actually an octahedral formation if we were to look at it that way. Um, however, so what we do in order to accommodate all those bonds, we hybridize the S and the P orbitals. Now, if you remember steric number, the steric number will tell you what orbitals to hybridize, okay? We always have an S orbital, typically, right? And then we have three P orbitals, okay? If your steric number is two, that means you need two orbitals. And so what'll, what'll happen is we'll mix, we'll throw like an S orbital and a P orbital into a blender and they become one orbital together. So then we get two SP orbitals and then we were left with two unhybridized p orbitals because if you mix two orbitals, you have to get two orbitals out. And so we just get partially s and partially uh, p in each one. And in fact, what happens, if you remember the shape of these guys, s orbitals look spherical, right? And p orbitals look like dumbbells. And in a wave, if you remember, there's, there's one side that is out of phase with another. And so we shade that other lobe to indicate that that's in the other phase. With an S orbital, there is no node, right? It, it's all in the same phase. And so what will happen is this S orbital will only mix with the lobe of the P orbital that's in the same phase as it. And so what happens is this, this part of the lobe gets a lot bigger than this guy, okay? And, and you end up getting this fishy looking structure here. I'll show you what it looks like, um, where we, we kind of assume the, the, the one side is just much larger than the other. And this is what we call an SP hybridized orbital. And this would be another SP hybridized orbital. Okay, and these p orbitals will just look like what you normally draw for a p orbital because they're unhybridized. Okay, and this will be typically what any hybridized orbital uh, will look like in general um, because um, usually we're mixing only s and p's. We don't really do uh, hybridization with d orbitals in this class, um, and so they'll kind of come up with this fishy looking structure. You, this could have easily been an sp2 or an sp3 as well, just based off the shape. Um, but that's kind of what the, this hybridization means. And when when we do that. Let's take this, like if the steric number was two, right? Uh, in this case, in, in the case of this, this acetylene here, the steric number was two, right? We've got the carbon on this side, it's got one and one here. So those sp orbitals are gonna line up like this and they're gonna bond. So here, uh, here's another sp orbital. This is gonna bond with hydrogen's s orbital over here and then um, uh, another sp hybridized orbital from this carbon, okay? Um, so. This is what these sigma bonds look like. Um, if you can kind of see, this is the internuclear axis. These are what we would label as the sigma bonds. And then remember, we have two unhybridized p orbitals, and so they're coming up and down on both carbons, and they're coming in and out of the page. So um, hopefully you can kind of see this. Uh, they're kind of going in and out of the page right here, okay? And so they kind of, uh, they bond on the sides, on the top, and in the back, okay? So it's kind of hard to draw um, just like this, but that's kind of a quick intro to hybridization. And we'll talk more about that here later in this problem set. Number three says, determine the number of sigma and pi bonds in the following molecules. Well, for, for sigma, it's really easy. All you have to do is count how many bonds you have. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. So here we've got 12 sigma. I'm going to just draw just the sigma sign. That's what sigma is. It's just the Greek letter. And then um, as far as pi goes, um, I'm going to say, okay, here's one pi. Here's a two more pi and another pi. So that's a total of four pi. Okay, so that's all there is to it. That's all there really is to it. But remember, in your mind, when you see those pi bonds, you're thinking, oh, there's a there's a p orbital here that's overlapping above and below this internuclear axis. And uh, here on this triple bond, it's actually two sets of p orbitals where one is coming in and out of the page um, like this, and they're bonding on here and then on the top and just like this, okay? Um, so that's kind of what you want to think of when you think of uh, p or, or when you think of uh, pi bonds, okay? All right, now, same thing here. Uh, we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten sigma bonds. Ten sigma. Ten sigma. All right, now, um, it's e it's pretty easy with double bonds, right? Because they're pretty explicit. So we go one, two, three, four, five, six. So we got six pi. Six, whoops, six pi. 
All right, last one. Um, remember, this stick structure is, this is what we use in organic nomenclature. And you have to remember that at each of these bends, there's a carbon, and not only carbon, there are three, like there are hydrogens that saturate these carbons unless there is a double bond. So um, I have to take into account all of those in order to determine the number of sigma bonds. So I'm gonna draw in all the hydrogens and then go one. I'm just gonna draw lines for the hydrogens, okay? Uh, I'm not gonna draw the H's, but just trust me, uh, there are hydrogens on the ends of these. So there are uh, three more there. Here's another one here. There's two here, there's two here, there's one here. Okay, so those are all the implicit hydrogens that we have not, that we cannot see. So I'm going to circle all of this, the sigma bonds uh, given these, these here. Okay, so here's one, two, three, four, and then this is another sigma bond right here. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, and 24. Okay, so 24 sigma bonds. Okay, so if you had not drawn in those implicit hydrogens, you probably would have gotten this problem wrong because you have to remember that those those uh, hydrogens are also sigma bonding with all the other carbons that are in this structure, okay? All right, and then pi bonds, uh, those are really easy here because they're they're always gonna be explicit. You're never gonna have to be, you, you never have to determine implicit um, pi bonds. It's just this one right here. So this is just one, one pi, okay? All right, um, that'll finish it for part one of problem set 15. Um, in part two, we'll be going over a lot of examples um, and how to hybridize and what those hybridizations will look like, as well as the shapes and angles based off of those, okay?